Righty ho then. One rather annoyingly long because of my slow running speed and uneventful trip back down from the ruin. We have arrived back in good old Balmora. Uh, hello. Tadabi. Rethendu. Um, let's just recap then. We've got a few. Yeah, we've got a few more bits and bobs. Go uh, on, I don't you. know whether or not it's worth trying to sell into Revere because I don't think he will have. Um, so many beetles. There's an infestation going on here, guys. Someone really should do something about it. Um, I don't think he's replenished his stock of monies yet. He's he's still. Yeah, he still has no money. <laughs> so. We could obviously uh, try and buy some something off him and essentially pay for it using our treasure, but I'd rather just get a big pile of gold coins at this point, really. What about this lady? I bet she has a fair amount of money. Yeah, she has two grand, so... I have some scrolls. She doesn't buy armorous hampers. Ah! That Dwemer coins, you buy those, don't you? Good. Um, Dwemer spear, racer, shield. Hey, look, it's looking more like it. I'll have to go somewhere else to sell those, but. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's see if I can bark this some more out of you. Oh, better yet. I've installed a mod um, at the suggestion of you, the viewers, um, which. Makes persuasion a bit easier, or a little bit more forgiving, anyway. Um, makes speech crafts, speech craft even, a slightly less useless skill. Um, continue trying, attempting to persuade her, but I'm going to wait till my fatigue recharges. Actually, now I think about it. Um, my mercantile skill is not particularly good, and basically mercantile or mercantile or whatever it is, that directly affects your ability to barter on the barter screen. Um, but we can get better overall prices if we if we butter her up, her up a bit first with, with speechcraft, so. Um, however, I'm just waiting for our fatigue to go back to full first. Fortify speed robe wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> uh, right, well, let's give it a go. Bollocks. Come on. Oh, I raised our speechcraft skill. That's alright. It's only 16, by the way. I thought it was higher than that, but fair enough. Uh, one more? No, okay. Let's, well, well, I'll call it quits at 63 out of 100. That's probably the best we can get. Um... The way persuasion works is basically you do one of these things. You can bribe, you can admire, which is what I was doing. You can intimidate, which raises their disposition temporarily, but the next time you talk to them, they hate you, basically. Um, and you can taunt. And what taunting does, if you do it successfully enough times, is you get you goad the NPC into attacking you so that you can kill them and take their stuff without it being a crime, essentially, because they attacked you first. Um, which is a neat little thing, actually, to be fair. You could do that in the other games. Um, you have to be quite good at speechcraft, though, to do it successfully. But um, I think I think Fathis here will be doing a lot of taunting. Actually, now I think about it, in, the, in, in, in his little career ahead of him, um, lots of taunting, so he can kill people, and get rid of them. Um, so we do need to get better at speechcraft. Now I think about it, I should probably find a trainer somewhere. Um, yeah, let's try bartering again. So now, we can have all of these. That. These. And look, she's already given us way more gold than we got before. Pretty sweet. Nice. I should try speech crafting the shit out of Revere at some point. <laughs> Bribe him with moon sugar. Now then, so, right, we better go talk to Hasfat. And I'm gonna get my ass ready for a heck of a lot of reading, because there's please, gonna be go some. 
get comfortable guys, get a cup of coffee, something, uh, we might be here a little while, um, hello, how can I help you? Yes, I've done your little favour. Perfect, just what I was looking for. Just let me take this Dwemer puzzle box and I'll tell you what Caius will want to know about the sixth house and about the Nerevarine. By the way, the inscriptions on the box seem to be the directions for setting a Dwemer key to open a specific lock. If you're interested, after you've delivered your report to Caius, come back and maybe I'll have a key you can take back to Argenthand. Tempting, although I'm not in much of a rush to go back there, to be honest. <laughs> Yes, the inscriptions on the box seem to be directions for setting a Dwemer key to open a specific lock. Um, yeah, blah, 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 you already said that. Um, right, so the sixth house then. House Dagoth is the sixth house, the lost sixth house. In the first age, House Dagoth betrayed the other great houses during the War of the First Council and was destroyed for their treason. I can answer any questions you have, but I'll also give you some notes to give to Caius and recommend some sixth house references he should read. Um, house Dagoth. House Dagoth was the sixth house of the seven Dunmer Great Houses. Nothing remains of the sixth house. Its members were all slain or adopted into other Great Houses following their treason in the War of the First Council. Their clanstead was called Kogarun. Uh, I gave you the notes given to Caius. Okay. Sixth House References. Here's a list of books. All of them will tell you something about the Sixth House and how it ended. Um, the War of the First Council, Saint Nerevar, Nerevar Moon and Star, and the Real Nerevar. Good luck f finding them, though. The recent events have made these hard to come by. Alright then. What about Nerevarine? The Ashlanders believe a reborn Nerevar will unite the Dunmer against the Outlander invaders and restore the ancient Dark Elven nation. Nerevar is a legendary hero and saint of the Temple, but the Temple denies the prophecy and persecutes heretics who believe in the Nerevarine. Tell Caius that Shan Gramuzgob would be a better person to ask about the native faiths and superstitions. Right. So he doesn't know much about it. Right, well... I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity to sit down and um, do some reading. Because first things first, we've got On Morrowind, which we haven't read yet. Um, so let's have, a, let's have a butchers through this. Um, On Morrowind, the Imperial Province by Aaron Manwe of Sunhold. After the conquest of Hammerfell, Imperial legions massed along the northeastern borders of Cyrodiil, and invasion fleets prepared in Skyrim. Initially, though the Imperial Legions and Navy were widely considered undefeatable, House Indereal and the Temple Hierarchy pro proposed to resist to the death. Redoran and Drez stood by Indereal, with Telvani remaining neutral. Hlanu proposed accommodation. Contrived border incidents in the Black Marsh ended inconclusively, but the swampy terrain did not favor le the Legion and did not favor Legion and Navy coordination against the. Against the legions massed west of Silgrad Tower and Craigenmore, and the legions west of Blacklight and Comiris View. Morrowind did pitiful, pitifully small militias, stiffened by small companies of Red Ren mercenaries, and elite units of house nobles and temple ordinators and armagers. Further complicating matters was the refusal of Indoril, Drez, Halalu, and Talvani to garrison the, the western borders. Indoril and Drez proposed, rather than defend the western border, instead to withdraw to the interior and fight a guerrilla war. With Hlalu advocating accommodation and Talvani remaining neutral, Redoran therefore faced the prospect of standing alone against the Empire. The situation changed radically when Vivek appeared in person in Vivek City to announce his negotiation of a treaty with Emperor Tiber Septim, reorganizing Morrowind as a province of the Empire but guaranteeing all rights of faith and self-government. A shocked temple hierarchy, which apparently had not been consulted, greeted the announcement with awkward silence. Indoril swore they would resist the death with the loyal support of Drez, while Redoran, grateful for a graceful excuse to avoid facing the legions unsupported, joined with Hlalu in welcoming the agreement. Telvani, seeing which way the wind blew, joined with Hlalu and Redoran in supporting the treaty. Nothing is known of the circumstances of the personal meeting between Septim and Vivek, or where it took place, or the preliminaries which must have preceded the treaty. The 
public reason was to protect the identities of the agents involved. Uh, in the West, speculation is centered around the role of Zirin Arctus in brokering the agreement. In the East, rumors suggest that Vivek offered Numidium to aid in the conquest of the Altmer and Somerset Isle in return for significant concessions to preserve self-rule, house traditions and religious practices in Morrowind. The Lord High Councillor of the Grand Council and Inderil refused to accept the treaty and refused to step down. He was assassinated and replaced by Halalu. By a Halalu, sorry. House Halalu took the opportunity to settle some old scores with House Inderil, and a number of local councils changed hands in bloody coups. More blood was shed in these inter-house struggles than against the Imperial Legions during Morrowind's transition from an independent nation to a province of the Empire. The generals of the Legions had dreaded an invasion of Morrowind. The Dunmer were widely regarded as the most dreadful and fanatic foes, further inspired by their temple and clan traditions. The generals had not grasped the political weaknesses of Morrowind, which Ty Emperor Tiber Septim recognised and exploited. At the same time, given the tragic depopulation and destruction experienced by the other provinces conquered by Septim, and the swift and efficient assimilation of Morrowind into the imperial legal systems and economy, with relatively small impact on lower or upper classes of Morrowind citizens, the tribunal also deserves some credit for, re for recognising the hopelessness of Morrowind's defence, and the choice, uh, chance sorry, of gaining important concessions at the treaty table by being the first to offer peace. By contrast, many Inderil nobles chose to commit suicide rather than submit to the Empire, with the result that the House was significantly weakened during the period of transition, guaranteeing that they would lose much of their influence and power to House Lalu, whose influence and power was waxing with its enthusiastic accommodation with the Empire. The Temple hierarchy more skillfully managed their loss of face, remaining aloof from political struggles and earning the goodwill of the people by concentrating on their economics, educational and spiritual welfare. So there you go, that's, well, I don't know if you'd call it on Morrowind, but it's more like on the Imperial Conquest of Morrowind. But there you go, that's still useful, I guess. Gives you a picture of the political landscape in Morrowind. Um, I think, and if you haven't played this game before, I think you can probably tell at this point that politics is a big deal in this game. A huge, huge deal. Um, which I honestly miss uh, from Oblivion and, and Skyrim, to be, to be perfectly fair. Um, yeah, in Skyrim you had the Civil War, but it doesn't. It's not really on the same level. It's not as detailed and intricate and you know fascinating, I suppose. Um, it's just you know a Civil War. It's just quite simple when you get down to it. There's nothing particularly interesting about it. Um, so, oh, I don't know why we still have directions to Carlos Cassades, but whatever. Um, these are Hasfat's notes for Caius, which we are going to read. Because once we give them to Caius, we won't be able to. Um, the following are notes prepared by Hasfat and Tabalus for Caius Cassades. Sixth house. House Dagoth is an extinct great house. In the wake of the ancient battle of Red Mountain, its leadership was revealed to have plotted treason and was discredited. Many of House Dagoth died defending the house. Those survivors who were faithful to the Great Council were redistributed among the other houses. The temple says the ancient legendary evil beings that dwell beneath Red Mountain in the Dagoth Ur region are the original leaders of this extinct house, sustained by some powerful evil sorceries. Other references. These books include references to the Sixth House and its destruction. The bookseller Derisa Darvel over in the commercial district might have copies. The War of the First Council, St. Narevar, Narevar Moon and Star, the real Narevar. Alright. Not so much to that in the end, actually. I thought it would be longer. But hey. So, we better get these back to Caius. Um, we should have had that, a note made in our journal about those books. So, if I have some spare cash and we go to the bookseller... We could pick up a few copies ourselves and have a look through them. Do some reading around the subject, so to speak. But anyway, um, let's just avoid the beetle hordes and get back to Caius. Oh god, we found a uh, hostile one. You little bastards are just fucking lethal, aren't you? 
Good God. Whew. Hello, some crates. You better st keep looking the other way, mate. I'm sure no one can see me right now, even though the, the little sneak icon isn't appearing. I'm willing to take the risk. Bone mold arrows. Restore agility. Hey, nice. Not very useful, but it's uh, valuable. Right, we got away with that. It does glitch out from time to time. It's supposed to, if, you, if no one can see you, it's supposed to come up with a little sneak icon in the bottom left, but sometimes it just doesn't. Even though no one can see you. I don't really know why. It just does that. Okie dokie. So. Um, I wonder who could train us in speechcraft. Or I wonder if someone in there could. In the corner club. Maybe a house Klalu as well. Who knows? <coughs> Hello. <coughs> Are you here to discuss your orders? Yes. These notes are from Hasfat and Tabulus. Excellent. I trust you didn't work you too hard for them. <laughs> you don't want to know, mate. I'll look them over in more detail later, but now I have some new orders for you. I've glanced at Hasfat and Tablis's notes. They cover the Sixth House admirably, but not the Nerevarine cult. Hop on over to the Balmora Mages Guild. It's right next to the Balmora Fighters Guild. Oh, you don't fucking say, Caius, honestly. Do you think I'm an idiot? Get Chandra Musgob to tell you what she knows about the Nerevarine. She'll have some silly errand for you. Do what she asks and report back when she's given you the information. Very smart for an orc. An unhealthy interest in the dark arts, perhaps, but very smart. She's always worried that the temple will bust in and stick her in a fire, and worried with good reason. I see. I think we may have already met her, because I tried to buy a spell off her earlier. Now I think about it. At least, I'm, I'm fairly sure it was her, because I, I think there's only one orc in uh, <laughs> the Mage's Guild, so... Wealth beyond measure, Albert. We've still got... Um, a few bits and bobs we should sell, actually. Excuse me. Now, where can we go to sell these? There's an alchemy shop up here somewhere, I think. Um, there's one over there, though, too. Tell you what, let's talk to you and ditch some of the... Uh, admire! Fuck. Bollocks. Admire, again. Please, like me. Like me! Please do! I just realised I'm doing this with almost no fatigue. Which is probably very silly of me. Um. <sighs> have these. And have these. You don't, seriously, you're a smith and you don't buy armour as hammers. What is wrong with you? You're useless. You really are. Come on, dude. Thank you. Fine, we'll try Meldor instead. You'll buy these, won't you? Yes, you will. Good. Come on. Ugh. Alright, let's walk over to the alchemists so we can restore our fatigue. Dum de dum de dum. I'm liking our outfit at the moment, actually. I think it's kind of cool. Go ahead, stranger. Right. Hello. Will you buy it's a diamond, scrap metal, and the raw glass? You will. Excellent. Yep. How about I admire you a bit? Oh, fucking Christ. 
I wonder if this mod's even working, to be honest. I think the more you try to do this as well, the more likely it is to fail. Come on. Alright, okay, right, we've, we've managed to get you back up to 46, I'm going to leave it at that. Quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, pissing off shopkeepers is such a bad idea in this game. Right then, so, I got some money now. 1600 odd gold. Let's go and find a speechcraft trainer. Go ahead, stranger. Because I bet it wouldn't cost a huge amount to train my speechcraft up. Honestly. Because it's quite low, you know. And it is one of my minor skills, so leveling it up will increase our level progress, which is also good. I reckon we might be able to find someone in here that will teach us. Short by light armor and security. Nope. Go ahead, Outlander. What do you need? What about you? You do. Sp oh, you do spells, eh? I wonder if you do anything uh, in the uh, region of telekinesis. You do invisibility for a ridiculous amount of money. Holy shit! Be nice to find a chameleon spell that lasted longer than ten seconds. I have to be honest; it's a bit useless. Some reflect spells, which are probably quite good, to be honest, if you're fighting a magic user. Outlander. Hey. Hello, Don Destroyer. Doesn't do anything, apparently. Won't even speak to us about anything other than House Lardu, so... What about you? No, bollocks. What do you sell? Lockpicks and probes. Masera. Hey, you, all, you all seem to do the same bloody skills. How useless is that? Have some variety, for God's sake. There we go. God, it is quite expensive, actually. Still, um, also you you will note by the way. Whoa, hello! So what's this seen that before? Who are you? Ronnie Van Monk and Lawman of the Great House Lalu. Cool. What is that? Lalu Royal Shield. That ooh. <laughs> medium armor though sadly um, I don't no never mind wait for my fatigue to come back and then I will attempt to persuade you a little bit and then we'll do some training he also barters what in guide to Algrun, guide to Balmora homilies of blessed Almalexia and re the real Baron's Eye part 4 odd um, why, why just those four things? <laughs> Come on, fatigue. Sometime today would be nice, so that'll do. Oh, I got him up by a point. <sighs> oh, hello, that was not bad. Ah. Hey, nice. Hey, nice! Alright, well, I'll settle for that. Um, although, you know what? I could. Where is it? Hee <laughs> hee! <laughs> now he likes us a heck of a lot! <laughs> uh, right then. That will have only lasted for a little while. Time passes in this game when you train. Um, it's now 5pm, so that's something to be wary of. For one more. No, we don't. Okay, never mind. Oh, we got to tram it up twice. 
which is cool. Which means our speechcraft is now 19, which is at least a little bit better than before. We are 7 tenths of the way towards level 3. Sweet. Can I admire you a bit more now? I can! Ha ha! He really likes me now. Nice. Our speechcraft skill is improving. Which is good. I'm glad someone suggested that mod to me, because I didn't know it existed. And, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm glad, because it means I can actually use speechcraft now a bit more often. And that's good, because uh, in in unmodded, it, it's, it's such a rubbish skill, to be honest with you. But I just couldn't not take it for Fathis, because that's just the kind of character he is. He is a smooth-talking, um, persuasive sort of fellow, um, you know, he can intimidate and taunt people and, and, and persuade them and admire them and stuff like that, he's good at it, it's what he does, you know, so I couldn't really not pick that, but I'm really, really stoked now that I've got a mod which actually makes it usable, <laughs> as opposed to just being there for role-playing reasons, um, so, under Aedes Trade House, Righty ho. Well, we better. Uh, I think we'll pop back into the Fighters Guild. Oh, no, no, no. You know what? We'll go to the Mages Guild. We can sleep there as well. We'll remember there too, after all. Um, but we're just going to go here just because Sean Grimosgob is here. So we can talk to her and then we'll get a night's sleep. There you are. Right. Hello. Strength is a virtue, friend. Welcome. No, oh, no interruptions. How many times? Oh, you are one of Caius's associates. That is a different matter. Caius and I have a very satisfactory arrangement, and I am sure we can come to some sort of agreement, if you will complete a little errand for me. The errand, then, is very simple. I need the skull of Levuel Andrano. You'll find it in Andrano's ancestral tomb, but take care not to upset the natives. The Dunmer have some peculiar primitive prejudices against necromancy and take grave objection to unauthorized tomb visits. Oh god, I'm being talked to on Steam. Well done. Note to self. Set Steam to offline mode before you start recording. You dumbass. How many years have you been doing this now, Dave? <laughs> anyway, um, necromancy. In the Empire, necromancy is a legitimate discipline, though... Body and spirit are protected property and may not be used without permission of the owner. But in Morrowind, the Dunmer loathe necromancers and put them to death. That's absurd, of course, since the Dunmer summon their own dead to guard tombs and defend the family. Sacred necromancy is righteous, while philosophical necromancy is evil. It's primitive superstition, that's all. I see. Nebula Andrano. He was no one special, a journeyman enchanter. There may be many skulls in Andrano tomb, but you'll have no problem recognizing Levuel's skull from the ritual markings. Um, Andrano central tomb. The tomb is south of Pelagia. It's just off the road, just before you reach the fork where the road goes southwest towards Sedanin and southeast of Vivek. You may need an enchanted blade. Some spirits are immune to normal weapons. Here, take this old short sword and maybe these old scrolls will come in handy. Nice. Yeah, um, we've actually been to Levuel Andrano's tomb. I didn't realise it at the time, but we have been there. It's the place where I found that dead dude and took his trousers. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. Obviously, we didn't get very far, because at the time I didn't have a magical weapon to kill the ghosts with, so. Right. So that's a new item on our to-do list. Uh, how would you like some of these potions I picked up, by the way? Because um, some of them are a bit shit, to be honest. They're just weighing me down. Come on, all I asked for is a couple of extra gold. Stingy bint, come on. Jesus. <sighs> Out of my way. I suppose I could spend No, 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 I'm going to sleep. Shut up. Um, let's try 12 hours. That should be enough to heal us up, I think. What? 
<laughs> Omnipotent. Omniscient. Sovereign. <laughs> Immutable. How sweet it is to be a god. Okay, your journal has been updated. Uh, has it indeed. I had a disturbing dream. I can only recall one part. A tall figure with a golden mask led me among the dead, as though a wedding ce celebration. As through a wedding celebration. I heard many voices, but no lips moved. I strained to breathe, but my chest didn't move. The tall figure spoke with each figure as he passed among them, laughing and joking, as if they were alive. He said, Omnipotent, omniscient, sovereign, immutable, how sweet it is to be a god. I tried to cry out, but without breath, my tongue fluttered in vain. That can't be good. We must have eaten some really dodgy salt rice for dinner. Uh, oof. Well, it's 9pm. We need to rest for another 11 hours. <laughs> okay, that's better. Leave Guas alone. They're, they're cute. They're adorable. Um, so, one thing we can do while we're here is we, we do have, if you recall, a contract for the Fighters Guild to go and deal with um, some Talvani agents near Caldera. And uh, this lady here... She will teleport us. She's a fast travelly person with a magic circle, which we can... Oh, cool. I can, I can just click on that then instead of doing this. That's neat, I guess. Fuck it, let's try that. Let's go to Caldera. Oh, we go straight to Mournhold. That's pretty sweet. Off we go. And here we are in the, the Caldera Mage. This is a neat addition, I have to admit. Normally you have to pay these guys to travel, but maybe maybe we're allowed to use these magic circles because we're part of the Mages Guild, I don't know. But yes, as you can see, we've just... Is there something I can do for you? We've just arrived, um... You're standing in a, in a crate, in, in a chest, dude. That's not good for you. Um... We've just teleported to Caldera. The town near which these Telvani agents are, because we should probably do this, to be honest with you, because if this was a real job, people would be asking right now, like, well, why have you still not dealt with these Caldera agents, dude? What are we paying you for? Well, this place is different. It has gates like Balmora now, which is pretty cool. There's a windmill over there. Yeah, Caldera's certainly been expanded a little bit by the mod. That's that's neat. I like this. Um, ooh, Imperial dagger, cool. Anyway, lots of guards about, which I'm not so fond of. Um, so yeah, we're here looking for some Telvani agents. Let's. Cycle on back through our notes here. Um, better yet, quests. Fight this guild, the Telvani agents. I'm to find, find and kill four Telvani agents responsible for thefts and disappearances at the Caldera mine. Their names are so and so, so and so, so and so, and so and so. They're hiding in a cave in the hills north of Caldera mine, and they probably have a lookout placed outside the mine. When the four agents are dead, report back to Idis Fire Eye. Well. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Uh, trying to talk to you here. I'm f fuck you then. <laughs> you. Go ahead, stranger. Uh, you're you're far more amenable. Um, Caldera Ebony Mines. Caldera Ebony Mines are southwest of the village of Caldera. There's an office, a bunkhouse, and a guard tower over near the mine entrance. If you're thinking of taking a look while you're here, head straight west from town, then swing around south to the bowl of the mine. 
um, through a gap in the mountains. Otherwise, you can try climbing straight over the ridge, but it's too steep a climb for most. That's alright, because I can levitate. But anyway, let's see. Wants us to go west and then swing south. So, this way. Um, Caldera, Aldrun, Caldera Mining Company. Again, some of the sign posts for some reason are the dodgy low resolution ones, and some of them aren't. By the way, we want to be going this way, I think. As a frame of reference, this is where we've teleported to. We've gone from Balmora down here up to Caldera. It wasn't much of a walk to get up here, to be fair, but, you know, just to save time, why not use the crazy magic circle of doom? So, I believe that over there might be our way through, that gap in the mountains. Yeah, this looks like the place, alright. Chokeweed, still can't remember what that's useful for. I know it's useful for something sure of it. Alchemy training, that reminds me that's another thing we really need. Big time. Scape crawl. Oh, that might be useful for something as well. I, again, I just don't remember. Right, this is the place then, I think. Hello. Hell of a leg. Interesting armor you're wearing. Alva. Hang on a minute! Alvaleg! Hello! And. So you're. Ah, ha ha ha! Excellent. Well, um, I could always talk to him, I guess. But, um. We've been sending him to kill him, so I think maybe we should just do that. <laughs> Sneak up on him and stab him in the back. Oh, okay. As soon as I hit the sneak key, the game crashed.